In this presentation, we're embarking on a serene exploration of Shonmyo, the Japanese way of tea. It's an experience of harmony, respect, purity, and tranquility. Our guide in this journey is none other than Sen no Rikyu, a master whose profound influence has woven itself into the fabric of tea, ceremony and Japanese culture. Together, we'll uncover how Rikyu's philosophy and his transformative touch on the tea ceremony are, not just echoes of the past, but resonate in the living traditions of Japan. His legacy is a testament to the timeless values and aesthetics that continue to color the Japanese way of life. Join us as we unveil the story of a man who turned simple tea into a cultural symphony. Born in the warm embrace of 16th century sake, a bustling hub of trade, Sen no Rikyu began his journey not as a noble or samurai, but as a commoner with uncommon vision. His early life was steeped in commerce and the cosmopolitan culture of merchants. Yet it was the art of tea that captured his young heart. A disciple of tea masters like Takei no Yu, and his later association with the influential daimyo order Nobunaga and Toyotomi. Hideyoshi, Rikyu cultivated his philosophy amidst the era's political upheavals. He found solace and strength in the way of tea, which he honed to reflect the beauty of impermanence and the virtues of Wabi Shabi. The acceptance of transience and imperfection. Rikyu's teachings would elevate the tea ceremony from mere social function to a spiritual discipline, drawing upon the principles of Zen Buddhism. His life became a testament to the art of Ichigo, Ichie once in a lifetime, where each tea gathering is unique, never to be replicated again. In his quest for simplicity, Rikyu championed Shibui, the aesthetic of subtle and unobtrusive beauty. He redefined the tea ceremony with rustic tea bowls, bamboo ladles, and thatched tea houses, insisting that luxury is found in simplicity and depth in the modest. Through his creation of the Shashitsu Tea Room, Rikyu gave a physical form to his philosophy. These were spaces where hierarchy was dissolved, and every participant, regardless of status, was embraced by the unadorned austerity that allowed for genuine connection. His final years, however, were shrouded in the complexities of his relationship with Hideyoshi, a tale of intrigue and betrayal that ultimately led to his tragic end. Yet, the essence of Riku's life work continues to percolate through time, his legacy indistinguishable from the soul of the tea ceremony itself. In a world where opulence was a measure of power, Senno, Riku cultivated the revolutionary concept of Wabi Cha, an approach to tea that stripped away the superfluous and celebrated the humble. This was not merely a stylistic choice, but a radical defiance of the ostentatious tea practices of the time. In Riku's tea room, the shashitsu, grandeur was replaced by intimacy, and extravagance by tranquility. The design was a direct reflection of his philosophy. Every element, from the placement of the tatami mats to the subtle blaze, on the ceramics, was an ode to minimalism. He emphasized the importance of shin gyo so, representing formal, semi-formal, and informal in tea utensils, ensuring that each piece, whether a bamboo whisk or iron kettle, resonated with purpose and beauty in its simplest form. Rikyu's choice of implements, like the irregularly shaped raku tea bowls, forged by the revered potter Chojiro, were embodiments of Wabi Shami. These tea bowls, often misshapen and asymmetrical, were a stark contrast to the perfectly formed and intricately decorated wares of the Chinese tradition. The very structure of the tea room was a canvas for his principles. The small, thatched entrance, Nairiguchi, compelled guests to bow, symbolizing the abandonment of ego. Inside, the Tokonoma alcove displayed calligraphy or a simple flower arrangement prompting contemplation and a return to simplicity. Through these innovations, Rikyu did not merely influence the tea ceremony. He transformed it into a meditative practice, an embodiment of the Japanese ethos. The echoes of his influence are seen in every aspect of the tea ceremony, and have permeated the broader Japanese aesthetic, leaving an indelible mark on the cultural fabric of Japan. Amidst the turbulent currents of Japan's Azuchi Momoyama period, the tea ceremony emerged not just as an artistic pursuit but also a theater of politics. Sen no Riku navigated these waters with the grace of a master, finding favor in the eyes of political titans like Toitomi Hideyoshi. Riku's tea room became a sanctuary, where political discourse could flow as freely as the matcha in the bowls. It was here, within the pared-down walls of the Shashitsu, that alliances were forged and tensions soothed. Riku understood the tea ceremony's power to equalize bringing daimyos and samurai to sit side by side, bound by the same ritual. Hideyoshi, who sought unification of Japan under his rule, saw the value in tea's diplomacy. The Great Wall would host tea gatherings to discuss matters of state, where the subtlest gestures in the tea preparation could reflect one's political acumen. For Rikyu, these gatherings were an opportunity to influence, 
and an arena to display his own political savvy. Yet, this intertwining of tea and politics was a double-edged sword, as Riku rose to prominence. His relationship with Hideyoshi soured, his influence perceived as a threat. The very qualities that brought Riku to power within the political arena, his artistry, his social insights, and his role as a cultural arbiter, became the catalysts for his downfall. In the shadowy dance of politics, Riku's tea room illuminated a path to peace and understanding. Yet it also cast the stark light of intrigue and ambition. His legacy in the realm of politics is a testament to the subtle, yet profound, sway of the way of tea. In the heart of Riku's teachings, there, lay a profound philosophy encapsulated in the phrase Ichigo Ichie, meaning one time, one meeting. Each encounter, according to Riku, is unique and should be treasured. As it can never be replicated, this ethos permeated the tea ceremonies he conducted, turning them into once-in-a-lifetime experiences for each attendee. Delving deeper, Riku's aesthetic was one that celebrated the beauty of simplicity and imperfection. The essence of his philosophy lay in the pursuit of Wabi Shabi, a concept that finds depth in austerity and grace in the modest. His tea rooms and utensils were often understated, shunning the ostentatious in favor of the subtle, reflecting a life of refined minimalism. This simplicity extended to his personal life as well. Riku's lifestyle was a testament to his beliefs. He valued the intangible, and spiritual over material wealth and extravagance. In his world, the whispers of the wind and the warmth of a shared pot of tea, held more significance than the grandeur of opulent palaces. Through Ichigo Ichie, Riku imparted more than just a philosophy for the tea ceremony. He offered a way to approach life itself. It's a reminder to be present in the moment, to cherish the transitory nature of our experiences, and to find beauty in the quiet corners of existence. As the sun set on the life of Sen no Riku, his relationship with Toyotomi Hideyoshi, the preeminent daimyo of the period, deteriorated. A once cherished confidant in the tea ceremony and politics, Riku found himself amidst growing suspicions and a clash of ideals with Hideyoshi. The exact reasons behind their fallout remain shrouded in history's mist. But theories exist a complex web of political, personal, and philosophical disagreements. Hideyoshi, who once regarded Riku's counsel as indispensable, began to see his influence and staunch adherence to the tea, ceremonies and principles as a threat to his authority. Some say it was Riku's creation of a tea room with a view of Hideyoshi's castle, that was deemed too audacious, symbolizing a position of watchfulness or judgment. Others argue it was Riku's subtle resistance to the ostentatious displays of power prevalent in the era that sparked Hideyoshi's ire. In the end, Riku was ordered to commit ritual suicide, a tragic conclusion to a life dedicated to the art of tea and simplicity. His death marked the end of an era, but also the beginning of his enduring legacy. Centuries later, Riku's influence remains palpable. He is revered as a cultural icon, and his approach to tea is embedded in the heart of Japanese tradition. The legacy of Sen no Riku extends beyond his death, continuing to inspire a search for beauty in the fleeting moments of life. His philosophies, the wares and tea rooms he designed, and his spiritual approach to the way of tea, have transcended time, reminding us of the quiet power held in a bowl of whisked green tea. Attempting to distill the essence of Sen no Riku's legacy into words, is akin to capturing the beauty of a transient moment. Within the tea ceremony almost impossible, Riku was more than a tea master. He was a philosopher whose medium was the everyday ritual of tea. His legacy lies not just in the whisking of matcha or the pouring of water, but in the profound lessons of life. He communicated through the simple act of a tea gathering. Let's carry forward the essence of Riku's teachings and appreciation for the impermanence of life. An embrace of elegance in simplicity, and the recognition that each encounter we have is a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Thank you for walking with us through the gardens of Riku's life and philosophy. May the peace found in the stillness of a tea room guide you in your own path. Until we meet again, cherish the beauty of the moment, the depth of the tradition, and the continued journey towards inner tranquility. And as our journey today comes to a close, remember that this is just one sip of the vast ocean of history and culture. If you've enjoyed this journey, consider subscribing for more tales of profound lives and moments. Peek into our upcoming episodes and explore our playlists for more enriching stories. Embrace the spirit of Ichigo Chi each encounter, unique and fleeting. Thank you for being a part of this moment.